Well, let me go ahead and share my screen. John, you have a question? Go for it. No, not a question, just or a comment. comment. I, uh, I'm amazed at how accurate the face mm -hmm. recognition actually is. <laughs> yeah. And it's blown uh, you know, my I mean, mind a couple of times too. It's, yeah, it's it's found baby pictures of me. Um, yeah. and, uh, and certainly um, I have two sons. One looks an awful lot like me and occasionally it'll get confused. But <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, by and large, it's um, it's just really, really accurate. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear that. So I'm going to jump, jump in here with Mylio. And first off, you're probably going to notice things look a little bit different. So I'm using a beta version mm -hmm. of our upcoming release. So you guys get a sneak peek at what's coming. And we're going to use some of the new quick filters tools today to get in and see a few things. So you're going to get a little bit of a peek at some of the cool stuff that is right around the corner. So in case things aren't exactly where you're familiar with seeing them, that's why. So what I want to do here first, right now I'm in the all photos view, and I want to filter my library just to see the sample library. So this way, if you guys want to go through and practice with some of this, you have that ability. If you aren't familiar with the sample library, you can always find that up in the help menu. And you can go down to add or remove sample library. And let me quickly put on my uh, cursor highlighter here so you guys can see my screen a little bit better, hopefully. One second, get that enabled. All right, so there you can go. You can add a room sample library right there. And I already have it installed, so I wanna filter my library to see only images in that folder. So I'm gonna pop open the quick filters, go down here to folder, and I can simply go to sample library and pin that. And now all I'm seeing are images from the sample library. And you'll see here, we now have a very cool folder tree. And these are mm. all ways that you can filter your images. And we'll go more into that later this month once you guys have this into your hands. I just wanted to give you a quick peek at that right now. And I wanna be able to keep this filter on while I look at different views. So I'm gonna go over here to the right and click this little link. And that keeps it persistent across every view. So one thing, if you've used filters in Mylio Photos today, if you enable a filter, it stays persistent by default across all of the views. And sometimes people get confused because they might have enabled a filter. They jump to something else and they don't understand why some pictures aren't showing up. We mm -hmm. changed that default behavior because it seemed like it was causing a lot of confusion. So now you have the option to link those, but it's not necessarily on. You can have different folders for or different filters for different views. So right now I've got the sample library and I'm going to jump down here to the people view and take a look at the people that are already tagged in the sample library. And you'll see that I have a handful of images here that are already listed as untagged. So when you first bring images into Mylio Photos, Mylio runs facial recognition scans. So it's going through every photo and taking a look and seeing if it can find recognizable faces. So that first import that you bring into Mylio Photos, a lot of people say, hey, why does this take so long? It's because that's one of many things that's happening with every single photo. And that's front loaded. So the time that you spend on import is definitely a bit long, but that means all of the rest of this, once you get in here and you start working and the import is complete, everything runs blazing fast. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do here from the people view is I'm gonna go ahead and double click on untagged. And this brings me into all of the images that do not yet have face tags. And if I wanna see which faces were detected, I can jump up to the more menu in the upper right and click on zoom to face. And that's going to zoom in every single picture here in the grid to the face that was recognized. And then if you wanna go through these one by one, all you need to do is click the question mark underneath and go ahead and confirm that particular name. And we can go ahead and move through these, go individually one by one. If you're looking at an image in any view in single photo view, you can pull up that image in full screen make sure your face tagging icon over here on the right is on and you're going to be able to see any untagged faces so we've already tagged this face so we can go ahead and go to the next image and see any other untagged faces we go ahead and jump back and then quickly start moving through these so going through these one by one is great it really lets you be out there but if you have thousands upon thousands of images this can be very slow and tedious and this is where one of my favorite things, batch tagging, comes in really handy. Mm. And it goes through and it automatically groups together similar faces. And it's AI, so it's really, really good, very accurate most of the time. 
but it still takes your eye to go through and kind of confirm some of these things. So I can glance through this list. And like was mentioned earlier, sometimes siblings look pretty similar, especially mm. when they're young. Mm. Is there a question? No. Nope? Okay. If you wouldn't mind keeping your microphones muted while um, during the presentation, that would be great. Feel free to unmute if you have a question, but just so the background noise stays down, if you could keep those muted, that would be awesome. All right. So as we're looking through this list, we can find pictures that maybe those siblings who look really similar, the AI didn't get it quite right. So we can go in here and we can either approve, reject, or go ahead and give this one another name. So Milio thinks that everything here is Colleen. This one here is actually her brother, Michael. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to type in Michael and pull that up. And now I've corrected that one. I believe this one here is Michael as well. So again, I can correct these as I go and then take a look through the rest of this list. All of the rest of those look correct. And then I can go up here to the top and simply say approve. And now all of those images have been tagged with the correct name. Let's go ahead and do a couple more. Let me take a look through here. These all look like Michael. I can say approve. And these ones, I believe these are Michael as a baby. So instead of the name that it chose, it does seem to get a little bit confused with newborns and little, little babies. So again, I can go up here to the top and I can cite, simply type in the correct name and get those corrected. And for me, this is the quickest and easiest way to move through thousands and thousands of pictures. Once you get through the names that are recognized, you're going to get down to some of the smaller groupings. These are some of the ones down here at the bottom that I mentioned that are scan family photos, older pictures from high school, people that I'm not quite sure I even remember what their names are. So I haven't done anything with them yet. So they're in smaller groups of usually like two. But, you know, I can go down there and work through those smaller groups as necessary. But the easiest way to do this is go through these bigger groups and tag as many people as possible very, very quickly. Are there any questions about that so far? Yes, yes, I do have a question. Um, sure. Angela, when mm -hmm. you click, when you hit the reject, what happens? Does it ever come back to be tagged later? Um, so that's a great question. When you do reject, it does come back later. If you ch check ignore, it does not. Oh, I've done it the other way around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you hit ignore, so it will never look at that photo face again. Correct. Oh, but what you can do, let me go ahead and double click into this image here. And I'm going to show you a couple of things and we'll jump back to that. I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to say ignore untagged faces. So what that did was it just went to that fate or that picture and it ignored all of the different people in here. So all of the faces that weren't tagged, it ignored. So Milio is not going to suggest to me to tag those faces again. However, if that was a mistake, we can fix it. So you can right click on an image and choose rescan faces. And it's going to take a second and it's going to come back and say, oh, wait a second. There are some additional faces here. Let's get those tagged. So Thanks. This that's, that's a question I was going to ask. Thanks. <laughs> Perfect. So that's a great way. If you, if you accidentally hit the wrong button, none of this is permanent. You can fix just about anything that you do in Mylio as far as adding and working with metadata. It's all correctable. So let me jump back here and I'm going to go hit the back arrow here a couple of times, click out of here. And I'm going to go back to, I'm going to turn off zoom to face and let's look at a group photo. Cause this is a question that I get frequently of how to work with group images, because these are the ones where a lot of times you're going to have pictures with people that you want to tag. And then there's going to be strangers in the image that you don't necessarily want to have tags for. So let me go ahead and I'm going to rescan these faces. And you can see that it brought up faces. It grabbed a street sign here. So we definitely want to ignore that. But this group right here, these are people we know. We want to tag them. So we're going to say, yes, that's Rich. That's Colleen. That's Carol, Michael, and Megan. But the rest of these tags, especially that face sign, but you can see even some of these other people over here on the left, we don't know them. We don't want to tag them. And we don't want to go through and click ignore on every single one of them. And this is especially helpful when you have a huge group of people that you only do want to tag one or two people in. If you open up the info panel, so if this is collapsed here on the right, just open up the info panel, go here to info, 
and scroll down and you can then click ignore untagged faces. And that's a great thing to do for group photos. Let's see here, manual tags. Now we talked a bit about tagging pets. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my filters here at the top. And I'm gonna jump back to my all photos. And let's go ahead and grab one of these ones of my cat. And he's awfully cute while he's sleeping. So I take lots of pictures of him. And I wanna make sure these images are tagged. So whether it's for Cookie, for Darren, or for your pets, or things that Milio doesn't necessarily recognize his faces, we have a couple of options. So the easiest one that most people find is to just click tap and hold and you get that box and you can add what we call a manual tag. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in real quick here. This is Glenn. And you can see I already have his name in there. So this is now showing a known person as my cat, Glenn Lovett. Now, if I go to the next picture, and let's say I want to tag this one as well. I could go ahead and do that same process. The other thing you can do is you can use this other people option. And it's really up to you whether you want to use one or the other. Um, when you use a manual tag, Mylio does not add that to its face recognition database. So it's not going to take any of those pixels that you marked and make that so it doesn't make the AI any smarter. It's just a manual tag. You're adding that there and it's going to show up in that person's collection. The same thing happens when you use this other people option. I can click this button and I can just type in Glenn, pull up his name, and that's gonna go ahead and tag him. So another area that that becomes really useful is when you're working with historical family documents. So I'm gonna jump over to the calendar view and I have this document from 1918 that is the enlistment record for my great grandfather. And what I wanna do is have this attached to his name. So when I go into the people view and I go to his name, this document shows up with his photos. So I could use a manual tag and just click on his name, the long tap here on Adolf, but instead I use the other people option here and I just click that plus button. So now that shows up with his information. And if I go over here to the people view and go to his collection, you'll see that document now shows along with any photo that has him in it. So is that helpful pe for people? I hope that that is useful for people who are working with a lot of historical documents, if you're into genealogy, and it works great for pets too. So if I go in and I search for any of my pet photos that I've done that way, they're also gonna show in that collection. Now, something that is even more helpful, let me go ahead and just jump back here. And I've got lots of pictures here. You can select multiple images and you can add these tags to many images at once. So. All of these images here have my cat McCallan, and I wanna add his tag to all of these images. So I can go ahead and click on the plus and type in McCallan, there he is. And now all of those images have that tag, including these videos. So these videos are gonna show up in his collection as well. So hopefully that's helping people a little bit and you can see how easy it is to add tags to multiple different types of media, not just your photos, but to documents, to videos and other things as well. Any questions so far? All right. So we talked about rescanning faces and that's something that if you accidentally hit ignore, you can go ahead and rescan. Or if you think that maybe the AI didn't pick something up that it should have, you can always hit rescan on that again. Um, let's talk a bit about correcting errors. So if you type in something wrong, let's go ahead and I'm going to click here back on my great grandfather's collection. You'll see over here in the info panel, again, you can open and close this on the right. All I need to do is if this is misspelled, I can just type, click in here and type in a correction. So a lot of people aren't sure like, oh, I misspelled something. It's so super easy to fix. Now, if you accidentally put in, um, let's say somebody, you tag somebody with their maiden name and with their married name, and you end up with two collections of the same person and you want to merge those, also very, very easy. All you have to do is, let's go ahead and grab these two. I'm not going to go ahead and do it, but you'll see once you select more than one, it says combine people. All you have to do is click that and it combines them into a single person tag. And then that makes things much cleaner and easier. So if you end up with multiple tags for the same person spelled slightly differently, you can correct them, you can merge them. And then if you wanna go ahead and adjust how those are named, you can go ahead and just 
click into those fields and fix them. All right. I think that was pretty much all I had for you guys today. Are there any questions on face tagging? All right. No, that that cleared up that cleared up a few things for me. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys all for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it and got a little bit of extra information, some tips that you didn't know before on face tagging. It's a really fun topic. And like we said at the beginning, feel free to break it up into smaller chunks. Don't feel like you have to do it all at once because that's super overwhelming if you've brought in thousands and thousands of images. Just do a little bit here and there. And remember, you can do that on your mobile devices too when you're out and about. So I want to wish you guys all a wonderful day. And I hope to see you in the community. If you have any questions, you, can, you guys can always find me there. Have a wonderful day, everyone.